Hi, everybody. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Artem Aginsky. I put a picture of myself up there in case you want to see me at my wedding. Actually, I'm just very proud. Uh, but if you're trying to find me later to ask questions, remember who I am. But I am actually really privileged to be up here. Uh, my team has volunteered me to come up and talk a little bit about the journey that TI has been on, uh, engaging upstream and really bringing the benefit of that to the embedded space, right? And I think the timing of how we made these presentations is actually great. You heard about the microcontroller embedded. You're about to hear about the Linux microprocessor embedding. Uh, so hopefully that happened on purpose. Uh, but maybe not. Uh, but anyway, as we jump into this, right, the, the reason why upstreaming is so important to us, that's the question that we're going to kind of take a look at. And I preface that, because I think if I ask that question to everybody here in the room, there'll be a million answers, and they're all correct, right? And it is very important. But why does it matter to an embedded vendor, a for-profit embedded vendor like Texas Instruments, right? And at the end of the day, it translates to um, because it matters to our customers. Embedded silicon development is complicated. It's resource constrained, meaning nobody is happy with the device they get. Either it doesn't have enough performance, the power is too high, not enough IOs. Pick your use case, but there will be a reason your resources are not enough, right? So there, with that comes a lot of code optimization, right? Your application, your differentiation is still what it is, and you have to extract that out of the SOC, right? And then with embedded silicon, longevity is the, is the king, right? It's the name of the game, so to speak. But why? Well, the cost of building an integrated system, a car, a train, an airplane, right, is very high. And you want to extract as much longevity out of that. So the, all of the innovation over time happens through software, right? So at the end of the day, our customers and the developers that engage with us end up uh, being exceptionally restricted in what they can do unless we open source what we do, unless we give them back the software, right, and let them take control of that. And the only scalable way of doing that is through upstreaming, right? And I'll show you a little bit, but along the way, you know, TI had ebbs and flows of upstreaming, right? And we paid the penalty of that along the way. So pains learn, you know, fighting on the battlefield, so to speak. So what does that mean for us, right, at the end of the day? The upstreaming enables us uh, to provide to our developers, and at the end of the day, to our customers and their customers, scalability, software quality, and longevity, right? And what I mean by scalability is very simple, right? It's exactly what I talked about, that customers have to optimize their software. They have to do something different. They can't simply take my code locked SDK, right, and be able to innovate, right? And software quality, right? If they're going to take control of that code, they have to be able to trust that that code was developed well, right? And if you're developing a closed source system, it's very easy to dilute yourself into thinking you can take a shortcut here, maybe a shortcut there, and before you know it, a lot of shortcuts added up to bad software quality, right? By the nature of upstreaming open source, you have to get that validation across the community. You get the brains and the innovations and the collaborations across the industry to really figure out what is the best solution, what is the right answer, and how do we attack. And at the end of the day, that translates to longevity of the silicon of the code and the end system uh, that our customers use. So I'd like to preach that, of course, but at the end of the day, how did we arrive at that, right? It's not rocket science. I know all of you are sitting back thinking we figured that out 20 years ago, what's taking you so long. Uh, well, that's what's taken us so long. Um, it's pains of growing, right? If we look back 20 years ago, TI in our OMAP days and the cell phone days decided to expand beyond cell phones, right? Let's go attack other applications. Let's open up our code base. And we started engaging the Linux community back around 2003, upstreaming some drivers, really engaging our SOCs. And along you know, the next 10 years or so, we made a lot of strides, all the way up to joining the Yocto project and moving all of our SDKs into Yocto. Uh, but after that, we kind of moved into, OK, great. Now we have thousands of developers on our platforms. It's exciting. Uh, we're starting to make some good money in the industry. Our silicon is selling, right? What do we do next? Well, we sort of maintained that direction, right? We kept releasing more SOCs, but we didn't really invest more into upstream. We did just enough to bring the kernel up to speed on our devices, maintain it, release LTS, but not engage the broader ecosystem, right? And then about five years ago, we released our new platform, the AIM-6 platform, that at the end of the day kind of enabled us to go broader. 
So now we have to deal with 10,000 of developers. That's a lot of developers to satisfy. And what we quickly realized is we have to take up our investment on upstreaming, right? And when I look at my team, I only give them two metrics, and please meet Kasim, he runs my software team, uh, and you can hear it from him directly, but I only keep two metrics for my team. High quality software and 100% upstream. That's the only way we can scale, and the only way my customers can scale, right? But of course, open source software isn't enough, right? You need open source hardware, right? You need open source tools, you need documentation, you need all of these components to come together, right? And it's really important to release that information out to the world, right? And I always urge ourselves and our partners, think open first. It'll improve the quality of everything you do, right? And at the end of the day, you won't lose a competitive advantage because the competitive advantage is actually the customer experience. Our customers select us because they want to, one, minimize their investment, the less money they spend to build a product, the better, right? But at the end of the day, if their software engineers hate us, you'll never actually get to build a product with them, right? So it's somewhat self-fulfilling, but that's the way it should be. It's a win-win situation for the community, for the ecosystem, and the embedded vendors. All right, there we go. So what's next, right? How do we go from here? We opt our investment, we're interested in upstream, you see us in all the mailing lists, we're engaged, we welcome you to engage with us, but where do we want to go next? Well, what we want to do is dispel what some end customers may consider shortfalls of upstream. And what I mean by that is often you hear customers say, I have to go out of the tree to do safety, right? Sometimes they'll say, I have to go out of the tree because I don't get enough performance. I don't get the latency I want. I'm gonna go build my own SDK, my own OS. I'll use some custom RTOS from the world, right? And those are just simply not true statements, right? What it means is we collectively as the industry have to go invest in these innovations uh, to go bring safety to automotive, as you heard earlier today, uh, to bring KPIs that automotive customers care about, like fast boot, right? Your laptop waking up in five seconds or six seconds doesn't ultimately matter. Your car turning on in a second or 10 seconds matters a lot. Why? Because your backup camera has to turn on, because maybe you already shifted the gear and the car started backing up. You don't have five seconds. You have 500 milliseconds, right, half a second. So all of those things matter, and they matter for us to make that investment in the upstream, in the main line, because it's the only way collectively we're gonna be able to scale, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, standardizing tools and performance metrics, right? Collaborating together to really have a, a bar of measurement, right, that we can all really satisfy what is success uh, for us at the end of the day. Uh, but as we get on this journey, you know, what I'm most humble is, uh, is by my team that has taken me through this journey. I learned Linux along the way. I've been here for about five years uh, running this business, and I've learned a lot from my team. And I'm actually really hoping that you guys come by some of the presentations we're doing today and learn from them as well. Uh, but I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, come by our booth and ask me any questions. And more importantly, tell me where you'd like to collaborate with us. Thank you.